So here is a rough proof of concept for a clock. Uh, and this is, this is a linear wandering hour clock. So this is the hour, and this scale gives the minute. So as the hour moves, its position gives you the, the minute. And the, you know, one hour falls off the, the edge and the next hour comes on. I'll do a few of these. Next. Now, the way this works is there's an outer loop of film that has three windows in it. You can see one going by there. There's one over there. And the inner loop of film has the hours, but the hours are interleaved. Uh, they're interleaved so that as the next window appears, it's just right on top of the next numeric hour. So it's kind of neat. It's kind of very mathematical kind of clock. Now, you know, this is just a rough proof of concept, but the, really the way to do this is to develop the film with windows and the, and the hours. You know, you can have different colors or whatever, and, it, and you can have a backlight. And in fact, this kind of clock, this wandering hour clock, was invented in 1659 by the Campani brothers for the Pope, because the Pope wanted to be able to tell the time in the middle of the night. Only in 1659, the clock, you know, this was, it was not a linear clock using film, it was a rotary clock. And uh, the advantage there is that the, the hours were cutouts and you could put an oil lamp inside the clock and, and therefore see the time at night. It was kind of neat. Now, the way I found out about this is the British Museum has, uh, has these little shows called Curator Quarter. And one of them by Oliver Cook, uh, he describes a, night, a wandering hour night clock. So definitely check that out and I'll put a link down below. Now I tried, or oh, well, I should point out that the, the, the films, you know, these two loops of film, they're going at the same speed around this sprocket wheel. You know, they don't slip by each other. Uh, so it's not going to wear out from, from slipping. And the, the purpose of these nails is just to get a rough tensioning. Now, I tried originally to use paper for this, and that's why these rollers are so tall. Uh, but forget it. It's too difficult to get paper. You know, you need to make your own sprocket wheel and punch holes in the paper. Forget it. It turns out it's very easy to buy movie film on, you know, used film on eBay. Uh, check it out. Here's a trailer for uh, X-Men and Old School. X-Men 2 and Old School Cat. Come on, Cat. Get it out of here. Um, and actually, this film itself is very interesting to look at. So if you look, I'm going to... Here's my uh, highly improvised white box. I'll pick... You look very close. Focus. There's a wolverine and a, and a claw, wolverine's claw and a cat. Uh, but you can see, uh, let me get even further. Where there's some sound. Sound is kind of interesting on this. Check it out. The, uh, the aspect ratio on this film is interesting. You know, it's it's like four by three, but then it's supposed to be widened to sixteen by nine on the screen. It's kind of interesting that they do that. Uh, where's the intro? Yeah, here's the what I'm looking for. Is yeah, if you look, look at the two lines on the right. That's the analog sound tracks. You can kind of just see them. And then, if you look at the spaces between the sprocket holes, each one of them, it looks like a QR code, code in there. Each one of those contains digital audio. And then that green area, if you look, has even more bits in it on both sides. I don't know why on this side the, the sprocket holes don't have anything, but... They really use every bit of this film. 
Uh, now, what, one of the challenges is the splice. Uh, I ended up using tape, tapped on tape, this stuff for electrical work. I, I really would like a better solution for that. Maybe if somebody knows, please comment. So what I, you know, I researched this a bit and what I found out is that the original movie film was of course called Celluloid, which was a nitrate film, explosive, uh, but easy to make splices. Uh, that was replaced by acetate, cellulose acetate safety film, also easy to make splices. You can kind of dissolve it with uh, acetone. Um, and then that, and then you know this modern film, you know originally we had celluloid magic, but this modern film is actually mylar. So we don't have celluloid magic anymore. We have mylar plastic magic. Awesome. Uh, but this mylar does not dissolve in. in acetone or any solvent that I know of. <laughs> uh, so the only way to make a splice is with tape. But maybe there's a better solution to that. I don't, I don't really know. Um, if you want to build one of these, actually I'm going to take it apart so you can see. Let's take this screw out here. So you're going to need one of these little sprocket wheel from a movie camera or movie projector maybe. Now here's the inner here's the inner film with the hours. So this, the way I'm measuring this is the number of perforations or sprocket holes. So this inner film has 144 sprocket holes and there's 12 sprocket holes, you know, between one hour and the next hour is 12 holes. Now the outer film is 180 sprocket holes. Basically it's three hours long. 60 sprocket, oh, I should say it's 60 sprocket holes, one sprocket hole per minute, 60 sprocket holes between each of these windows. So, you know, kind of another way you could do this is instead of this interleaved way, Instead of 180 sprocket holes, if you had 720 sprocket holes, you could just have one film with all the hours on it. But then you have to store all that film somewhere. So I still, I don't know, I still like the, the interleaved way. It's kind of neat. Um, I'm kind of thinking you could make a really, really cheap clock out of this. Might be worth uh, Kickstarter or something. You know, those, those flip clocks came back into style. And I could easily see you could, you could make a, uh, a backlit clock like this. Actually, it would be interesting if that would be cheaper to make or just, uh, you know, LCD panels are so cheap you could just do it with an LCD panel. I don't know. Anyway, wandering hour clock. <laughs>